All right, so what you have to do is um, basically you have to get the lock out, that's pretty obvious. And uh, you have to crack open the lower end of this housing, which I did obviously already. Just be careful with it because you don't want to break it too much. Um, there's not much contrast on the video, I think. So you can see this is how it looks inside. Um, if you look a bit close, you see here there's something standing up all the way around. It's like a seal. And here you have the corresponding thing. It's not really sharp. Well, anyway, and basically when you want to close it, you just put some super glue around here. Not all the way, just a bit. And um, when you put it back together, apply some pressure with one of those. A bit of wood. So basically just like make a few drops of super glue here around like that and then just you know I think you know I don't need to show so it's like just like bang it together put a piece of wood in the middle to apply the, the pressure evenly and then it's like new roughly okay um, anyhow what you really want is the motor it's this the information I said earlier it's it's not in here what I said earlier was wrong because I, I, I thought I remembered the holder for the fuse would be somewhere here but what you really want is this Please forgive me if it's not too sharp now basically what you have to do is you have these latches here and uh, you have to like open them like this so you can pull the motor apart towards that uh, I did that with the other one Right, okay, I'm sorry, it's a bit it's a bit tricky to record something with an SLR and a tripod and at the same time watch if it's in focus. Anyway, okay, so you get the engine, uh, shit, you get the motor out and you see here you have some little lashes. Basically you have to bend them back and then you can pull the whole motor, the whole motor assembly apart. I did that obviously before, so... <sighs> Hold it a little bit at, at the shaft here because otherwise you're going to put a lot of strength onto the contacts inside. Okay, that's it. Um, once you have it open, focus and light. Yeah, the thing is the camera can't see as much as I can see with my bare eyes. I'm very sorry about that. Um, when, you, when you look in here, <clears throat> there's a, a bearing at the back and blah, blah. Do yourself a favor. Take some um, like WD-40 spray it on a countertop, bath a q-tip in it and just clean a little bit around because there's normally a lot of dust and, and old grime and blah blah. Especially here at the lower end where the, the end of the shaft sits. It will help your motor a lot if you just clean it thoroughly. Um, when you look at the front of the motor here you see there's not much space but you can push it a bit back and actually when you look in there, you see there the, the metal springs for the cold. I, I'm very, very sorry, I can't show it to you on, on here. It's all just black and maybe even blurry. But when you have it in front of you, you're going to see that there's some little metal springs and uh, you have to push them back and then you can free the axle a bit more like that and uh, can start working like this. Okay, and uh, same thing here, when you have it open, yeah, I'm sorry, you can't see it. Um, when you have it open, you see here at the front, there is this copper bit. Just clean it a bit with a Q-tip and a WD-40 because it helps your motor to, to work more reliable because the electricity is going to be transmitted from these little um, colds here, these spring-loaded things, one, two onto these things and then electric field blah 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 anyway uh, what we are looking for is the fuse which is here where this piece of copper is this is where this metal plate resides normally and uh, basically what you have to do is you have to pull this thing out with a ply whoops I'm sorry pull the thing out here with a plier and uh, clean the contacts a little bit and push a corresponding piece of copper in 
Um, best is actually what, what I did is, um, you know, like this kind of uh, copper cable which you have in your wall for electro insulations. I just cut a little piece of this uh, roughly about the same length and just push it, well, ram it in there kind of gently. The, the other thing, and I'm, I'm very, very sorry, you can't really see it here because of the light is, when you look closer in there, you see here at the front of the axle, um, this is where the, the coals attach to it. So what you have to do is before you totally reassemble this, you have to put the axle back to its real position, otherwise it wouldn't fit in the case. So basically it's like there are two metal springs with some stuff here. You just push them to the side. You just have to push them to the side and then put the, the rotor back in. That it's like fixed close. Oh, it's like maybe you can see it a little bit, those here. Um, because when you do the repair, you obviously need all the space you can get, so you pull it out like that. And if you want to get it back together, you have to like wiggle it back in place. Uh, the other thing is, suck, click, that's how it should be. Um, the other thing is, once you have the motor open, do yourself a favor, clean it a little bit, like clean the shaft here with a little bit, and like don't spray WD-40 on it. Just have it on a Q-tip and clean a bit around inside the case because there's normally like a lot of dirt and old rubbish. So once you have it open, you can also clean it a little bit, especially uh, these contacts here in the front. As I said, bit of WD-40 on, on a table or something like that. Put a Q-tip in there and then just wipe it clean. Also here, because that's where the corresponding, whoops, the corresponding, I'm getting crazy with this, uh, the corresponding bearing is, you know, like when, when it's back in the case, it's supposed to be like that. Okay, and as a closing moment, this is a still. So just to make it clear, when you see the case open like this, if you look from the bottom, starting you see first is the plastic and then you see this uh, like long shiny golden looking piece when you open your motor there will be a silver metal piece that is the actual terminal resistor that is what you have to pull out and just replace with an old nail or probably like i did a piece of copper wire that's it that's actually all the fix the rest is just work to get to it um, because in a, in a video earlier it may have looked like you that you guys are trying in the end to pull that that spring mechanism itself out that's wrong so it's that little um, like roughly a centimeter long shiny piece which you have to remove and replace with something else but in this picture as well you can see that spring which you maybe have to bend a little bit back to get the motor back together you can see it pretty clearly so just use a fine screwdriver bend it back and you can wiggle it back in um, some people say that it may be not a very clever idea to remove a safety mechanism because that is what that thermal resistor is. Um, but the problem is that material, it ages and then over the years it gets weaker. So what happens is it kind of overreacts and uh, when you use uh, the motor maybe two or three times in a row or if it's very hot then your the motor itself appears very weak. But it's not the motor, it's because the electricity is getting like breaked out before it actually reaches the motor that's all so um, i'm in a pretty hot area i'm living in thailand and my car is okay with that fix and i did it on uh, two doors right now and it works perfectly well even here in the hot weather and i haven't had any trouble since um, so just give it a shout it's an old car and it's better than nothing so I hope it's gonna help you guys and uh, thanks for watching sorry for all the mess inside the video and the skipping forward and backward but I'm normally not doing tutorials I just wanted to share because I realized that quite a lot of people looked at the other video where I'm testing it actually so I just pulled an old motor out and uh, tried to explain what I did I hope it's gonna help some people and uh, good luck and enjoy your cars